Hey, Composing Gloves here, and this is a video in the Critical Listening series, and today we're talking about what is psychoacoustic. So first, before we get into that, we got to get a little philosophical with sound. Now, I've defined sound uh, very in a very physicky sense in other places. Here, we're getting a little more philosophical with things. So psychoacoustics is the study of how we perceive sound. So if we have to be there to perceive this thing we are going to refer to a sound, then it is underneath the psychoacoustic umbrella. That's what we're really concerned with in critical listening. It's a huge concern with what we're going to be doing. So again, you've been practicing your listening every day, of course. And so naturally, you are becoming more expert at the way things sound. So now you need to start putting together some things on how it sounds, like why does it sound that way, that kind of a thing. So we need to start delving into psychoacoustics and acoustics just in general, actual acoustics. And we, we'll go into various places. Now, psychoacoustics, we got to get, again, a little bit philosophical. So sound is different when we're going to be talking about it in this sense. Sound is perceived. So it is. there is no thing out in the universe that you'll be able to get and say, here is sound. You won't be able to say, like, like here I can say, here's a mouse. This is a mouse. I can grab it, pick it up, I can show it to you. This is a mouse. Instead, it is an observable phenomenon, meaning we have to be there to perceive it. So this mouse, if I left the room, this mouse would still be here. Someone else could come in and perceive the mouse. If no one's here, it gets a little complicated. There's a variety of ideas of what happens then. But the mouse is going to be there when you get back. So we could reasonably argue that the mouse is there the entire time. So I know I know it seems nitpicky, but once you've taken philosophy, you start. there are some serious ideas out there. And so they're very interesting, but they're for another discussion. So anyways, the point is sound is it needs us to exist. There are, are vibrations. Vibrations are what happens outside in the universe. You, there will always be vibrations in the same way that the mouse will always be here. So th those will be there, but the pattern of recognizing sound is what we will refer to as psychoacoustics is when sound exists only in your brain. That's where sound is. That's where you're like, this is sound now. Outside, it's just vibrations. In your brain, it's sound. So we've got that out of the way. That's sort of the definition we're going to be running with for sound. I may accidentally use sound in the other sense because just when you're talking with your friends, you're not going to be like, Oh, did you hear that sound over there? And you're going to be like, well, sound technically only exists in your head. What happened over there was a vibration. They're like, no, you're not going to be doing that jazz. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard it and stuff like that. So occasionally I may just fall to dogmatic pop culture stuff. So uh, let's talk about now psychoacoustics. Uh, I'm not not dogmatic. I guess it's just an easier way of referring to things. But here we're getting a little high level, high flutin crowd. So we got to be a little more specific now. Psychoacoustics is the study of how we perceive the sound, and what does this mean? Well, there are tricks. They're called auditory illusions, things that we think are happening that aren't really happening. There's a huge variety of them that happen to us. And now there are ones, now what doesn't fall underneath the psychoacoustic umbrella are real acoustics, meaning vibration-related things that happen outside of our environment. When it hits us and then we perceive it differently because of some effect, like, uh, like for example, well, here, I'll talk about those in a little bit. But if something happens that our brain makes us process something differently, that is now psychoacoustics. So now you have that. There's a variety of things that fall under this umbrella. There's a variety of cases where you could argue that it's acoustics uh, and not psychoacoustics or it is. And one of them... We know we're not even going to get into that. They're, they're sort of weird cases, so we're just going to leave it be. Most of it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that when people are arguing about that, they've both observed something that's a thing, and it's just they're just arguing over a definition. So who cares? Now, let me give you a simple example. But as we get going, I just want you to know that that is what psychoacoustics is. We have defined it as the study of how we perceive sound, where our perception could play tricks on us. So there's one that's very fundamental in sound design. It is called the Reese. So if we were to open up like a citrus and put it in default, I have a whole series on citrus if you're like really want to know what I'm doing here. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up a tone, right? So I have a tone coming out. Now if I set up a second tone, and so I'm going to put out tone two, I have two tones going now. now. So nothing crazy here, just two tones. Now if I were to move tone two off just a smidgen, we'll put it, I'm going to move this number. You're going to notice something. Like, hey, wait for it. There it is. Oh, man. If we were to make it a bit faster. Oh, 
we get we get this weird beating effect. This would be a psychoacoustic phenomena. So the tones get kind of blurred together. Now we're going to be talking about this later in way more detail, but I just want to show you an example of a psychoacoustic phenomena. It's pretty easy to do. Now it gets to, now I've been doing with two pure tones. Imagine what happens when you get two saw waves. Now we're getting interesting. So if we have two and two, so right now it's the same thing. So la la, and I have aliasing going on. Digital Audio Basics, again, I expect you to know that stuff. So when you hear crap like that, you're like, oh, that's what that is. So I'm going to fix the aliasing. So we have this. It's like, oh, okay, that's what that is. And now if I move it off just a smidgen. That's the Reese. That's the same thing. Now, it's because I saw, uh, because you've watched my, of course, Silent and Synth Basics, you've seen that. A saw wave is all these sinusoidal components added up. So we're taking individual saw sine waves in each signal and putting them together, and it creates this this thing. Now we're going to talk about this way later. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself right here. I don't. I want to have a separate video where we talk about these things, and I have them in in places where they matter. They're going to matter in the upcoming videos. So they'll be around other videos where this concept is applied. Now that is what. Uh, psychoacoustics is in a nutshell. There's a whole slew of stuff. So we're going to have some interesting examples. We're going to look at uh, just what it is, what it does for us. And of course, before we really get into psychoacoustics, if we're going to talk about how it affects us, we better know how we hear first. So we're going to be talking about anatomy and the way our brain. Now the brain thing, I'm still doing a ton of reading on that subject. So I may have videos later on because it, does, it gets quite complicated and I don't want the quite complicated version for you. I want the version that you get the stuff where you need from it. But we will slightly talk about the brain and what goes on in there. Probably really basic stuff. But most of the psychoacoustics acoustic stuff actually occurs uh, in your ear, the, the anatomy, the physiological way you've been designed to hear, the, the anatomical way, I guess, is the more correct thing to say. Now, your brain gets quite interesting because it involves neurotransmitters, and it's a way heavier topic that's not been completely expo explored yet, which is like, for example, why certain? Why do you like certain music? Why is what really what happens? What releases in your brain that causes you to act certain ways when you hear certain kinds of music? Why can it shift mood? Why do some people like some music so much more than other people? Like I've I've said the same thing sort of three times. Uh, why when you hear a certain song do you remember certain things? You know and they trigger all these thought processes and neural patterns. And so this is a subject that's still being explored quite heavily. And then there's one other thing that I've struggled to find resources on. Maybe you guys know some cool resources, but that's uh, bone conduction because. They have headphones that work on bone conduction, but if you guys know any resources about bone conduction, I am interested to read the, about them because I found some stuff, but not very much stuff. And all I know right now is it's a thing and it bypasses your eardrum. I mean, I have the general idea what about what it does, but all the blog posts are so uninformative when, you know what I'm saying? So... I just have to find some medical papers and just dig through those. That's always the best place to go, by the way. If you really want to know how something works, dig through medical paper crap. That's like where all the that's where the real people go. Like if you really want to know, go there. So maybe you have a cool resource though. If you found a cool resource that sort of talks in a little more layman's talk, that's not so darn complicated, uh, I'm game. I'll give it a shot. If you have any questions, let me know. This is, uh, hopefully, <laughs> not hopefully. You should know what psychoacoustics is now. It shouldn't be a question anymore. Uh, subscribe, uh, follow me, not follow me. What do I say? Support me on Patreon. I guess that's the phrase. Support me on Patreon. Got a Patreon. And that allows me to continue making content like this. And have a blessed day. Day. Yeah.